This is the OTB Network. Welcome to this week's edition of Horses and Courses. I'm Jean Wood. We'll start things out down in South Florida where unfortunately the weather washed the William McKnight off the turf course. It was downgraded from a two to a three. $150,000, three-year-olds and up, going a mile and a half, now on a sealed sloppy main track. And they're all in line. And they're off. It was a good even start. No surprise, Precious Passion showing early foot. Goes out for the early lead, and Samard there in the second spot, free fighter from the outside. Prince Will I Am is tucked down and saving ground around the first of three turns. No speed at all from Memorial Maniac. He is last of the five, and already about 14 lengths back of Precious Passion and jockey Elvis Trujillo as they come to the stretch for the first time. Precious Passion content to race well off the rail, and he's a clear leader as they straighten away. Precious Passion about in the four path right now, and he's about three and a half lengths in front. Samard is geared down to the inside for his run. Prince Will I am between runners third. Free Fighter is just outside of him. And it's a long way back to the lagging Memorial Maniac and Victor LeBron, who are now about 16 lengths back with one mile left to run. The quarter was 25 and three, the half 50 and three. Decent enough fractions for the mile and a half, and Precious Passion continues to race well off the inside. In fact, it now four or five wet paths wide as he makes his way around the clubhouse turn. The lead is down to only two lengths from Samard. Prince Will I Am is just outside of him. Free Fighter is even further out. He is fourth now and about four lengths off the lead. It's another nine further back to Memorial Maniac. The three-quarter time was 116 and three for Precious Passion and Elvis Trujillo, who tried to take him wire to wire in the off-the-turf W.L. McKnight this afternoon. And Precious Passion, five furlongs from the line, has about a two-and-a-half, three-length lead. Samard working a little harder in behind him as Prince Will I Am is now a joint second. Free Fighter is still in with a shot, and they're closing ranks behind Precious Passion as they go inside the final half mile. Precious Passion lead is down to about a length and Prince Will I am now working a little harder it looks like he may go to the outside of Precious Passion and here he comes so the favorite Prince Will I am has actually gone up to take the lead away from Precious Passion who didn't have much to say about it now Prince Will I am and Javier Castellano have opened up a clear lead as they come to the final quarter mile Precious Passion not giving up trying to hang tough in the second spot Free Fighter now just took second away from him and as they come to the top of the stretch it's Prince Will I I am under left-handed urging, who's the leader in the McKnight. Prince Will I am down to the final furlong. He's got to hold off Free Fighter, who's got a big chance in the second spot. Prince Will I am drifting about, but he's clear as they come down to the final 16th. Prince Will I am from Free Fighter, and Prince Will I am will be a great at stakes winner on dirt. He takes the McKnight. Free Fighter was second best Memorial Maniac, close for third. Prince Will I Am coming in out of that controversial DQ from second to tenth, and I think it's fair to say that the DQ itself wasn't so controversial as the uh, the big debate or argument that took place between Javier Castellano and Calvin Burrell in the winner's circle after the running of the Breeders' Cup Marathon, which saw Prince Will I Am finish second after causing a little bit of uh, chaos at the top of the stretch. Here there were no such problems as under steady handling Prince Will I Am draws clear to win by two and a half lengths over Free Fighter with Memorial Maniac back in the third spot. The winner Prince Will I Am is a three-year-old Chestnut Ridgling, a son of Victory Gallup from Dinah's Dynamo by Dinah Former. Bred in Kentucky by Roxanne Martin Stable and Anzac Limited, owned by Casa Farms One Limited, trained by Michelle Nehi, and ridden to victory by Javier Castellano, Prince Will I Am covers the mile and a half on that sealed slop in 238.40. We'll head next to the fairgrounds where they had one of their uh, sequence of big race days. We'll start things out on Saturday afternoon with three and up fillies and mares sprinting in the Esplanade. And one half furlongs. Phillies in the gate. They're off. Racing in the Esplanade. 
Wildcat Eris from the rail straight out to the front, and Corey Lannery going right on offense with Wildcat Eris to lead Lady Alexander, Greeley's Rocket, and Kimbo Trails. Five lengths from leader to last, Wildcat Eris in front of Lady Alexander, a length and a half in back of Wildcat Eris as they move into the far turn. Greeley's Rocket and Kimbo, last of the Esplanade Quartet, the opening quarter in 22 and one-fifth seconds. Out in front, Wildcat Eris leading at two to five, Lady Alexander, Greeley's Rocket spots up on the outside, and Kimbo, last of the four to make the top of this daunting fairground stretch past the quarter pole, Wildcat Eris in front. So Wildcat Eris led them out of the stalls, down toward the final furlong, Corey Lannery, and Wildcat Eris in front. On the outside, Miga Mena driving Greeley's Rocket for this final 16th. Wildcat Eris holding her, though. Inside the final half furlong, Lady Alexander and Kimbo battle for third. It's Wildcat Eris in the Esplanade. Wildcat Eris led throughout in 104 flat. Greeley's Rocket was second, and Kimbo edged out. Dodds on Lady Alexander for third. Wildcat Eris, kind of an interesting three-year-old filly. This is a four for five horse. She has only lost once. She's got wins on the dirt at Hoosier and now at the fairgrounds, the Polly at Keeneland, the Turf at Churchill. She seems like a versatile filly and certainly an up and comer in the sprint division. Perhaps one to keep your eye on over the course of the winter time as she wins on the front end. Three and a quarter lengths, the better of Greeley's Rocket with Kimbo back in the third spot. Favored Lady Alexander, a much busier filly, a lot more starts to her record. Uh, got bumped out of the starting gate run a little bit off of her feet by the eventual winner and backed up to finish last in the field of four. Wildcat Heiress is a three-year-old bay daughter of Wildcat Air from Saramai by Personal Hope. Bred in Florida by Journeyman Stud and owned, or I'm sorry, bred in, in Florida by the Cloverleaf Farms and owned by Ron McCauley, trained by Tevis McCauley and ridden to victory by Corey Lannery. Wildcat Heiress covers the five and a half and 104.14. We'll head back to the fairgrounds next, the $60,000 L'Atelier Memorial for two-year-old fillies. And the gate for the L'Atelier Memorial. And they're off. Big Sweets broke sharp from the rail. Here's Big Sweets going out toward the front for Brian Hernandez Jr. straight away from unbridled praise and fiscal policy. Fast Station, the favorite fourth after the first furlong and a half. Then we come back to Street Storm and... Dimanche Police Trails, 12 lengths already from leader to last, and Big Sweets past the half-mile pole first in 21 and 2. Big Sweets at this bullet pace as they enter the far turn. Big Sweets leads by three at the inside on Bridal Praise, together with Fiscal Policy through the turn. Fast Station has seven lengths to raise in the final 5 sixteenths. Street Storm out wide. Dimanche Police is last. Big Sweets at the top of the stretch. But fiscal policy looms now for Big Sweets with under a quarter to run. On by praise and Fast Station charging now. Front outside Street Storm, then Dimanche Polish into this final fairgrounds furlong. Here comes Fast Station up to the front. Fiscal policy toward the rail. Street Storm runs on. Inside the final half furlong, Fast Station. Sean Bridgerhan triples for Steve Asmussen. Fast Station going away in 111 flat. Fiscal policy second, Street Storm third, and Dimanche Polish finished fourth. Another interesting filly, Fastation. I think one will probably be following over the winter time at the fairgrounds. She's five for eight lifetime, now winning five in a row, including last time out at Zia Park. She had also won at Redima, uh, Lone Star Park. She's been all over the place, now a score at the fairgrounds as well, drawing clear with a four wide move at about the quarter pole to win off three and a half lengths, the better of fiscal policy in off of a try in the Delta Princess with Street Storm back in third. The winner of Fast Station is Dark Bayer Brown daughter of Valid Expectations from Fast Fingers by Nepal. Bred in Texas by L.T. Smith Enterprises, owned by Heilig Broad Racing Stable. Trained by Steve Asmussen and ridden to victory by Sean Bridgemahan. Fast Station covers the 6 and 111.19. Next up, it's older horses at a mile in the 16th in the Tenacious. Starter Frank Comberell Jr. on the stand. They're in the gate. They're off in the Tenacious Handicap. Here's Smart and Destiny heading out toward the front along with Z Humor, Mad Flatter. Recapture the glory and the cherry cap toward the inside. Dubious Miss is fifth to the turn. Country flavor, Atone Trails. 
around the first turn. Z Humor ranging up now to vie for the early lead with Smart and Destiny. Smart and Destiny and Z Humor heads apart. Recapture the Glory is racing inside of Mad Flatter, who's on the fourth path through the turn. Dubious Miss Country Flavor atoned his last. The opening quarter, 24 seconds flat. Smart and Destiny leads by a half length to Z Humor, who's keen there under Sean Bridge Mahan, with five furlongs to go in the tenacious handicap. Recapture the Glory is eased off the rail from third. Mad Flatter is a wide fourth, but in hand by James Graham. Mad Flatter is out deep as they head to the half mile pole. Dubious Miss went off the fence. Country Flavor, a toned remains last. The half mile in 48 seconds flat. They go into the far turn. Miguel Mena and Smart and Destiny, just the leader from Z Humor. As they round the far turn, recapture the Gloria close third. Dubious Miss, Country Flavor, Mad Flatter in the five path, but only three lengths off these leaders. Now in the shadow of the quarter pole. And Atoned taking closer order two after three quarters. And 113 flat, top of the stretch. And the tenacious handicap, and it's recapture the Glory who swept in front. Recap Capture the Glory going for home from Z Humor. Smart and Destiny toward the fence under pressure. Dubious Miss is spying a gap in tight there. Dubious Miss. Country Flavor charging on the outside. Mad Flatter is last. Inside the final half furlong. Toward the inside, Z Humor. Here comes Country Flavor and Shane Sellers. Country Flavor at 11 to 1. Country Flavor has won it from Z Humor. Dubious Miss finished third. And Recapture the Glory was fourth. Country Flavor, one of the longer shots on the board, second longest price in the field, scores the victory by a game neck over Z Humor, who was in off a win last time out in the Delta Mile, with Dubious Miss back in the third spot. Favorite in the field was Mad Flatter, who was a little bit on the wide side early, made a bit of a middle move before fading to finish last in a disappointing performance. He's been in very live form of late. The winner, Country Flavor, now five for 15. His most recent performance was a fifth place finish behind Gran Estreno, who seems to win the Washington Park handicap every year. Also in that race with Giant Oak and Mad Flatter. It was pretty solid field that day. Country Flavor did win the Hanshin at Arlington Park earlier this year on the synthetic, but now scores his first stakes victory on the dirt. Country Flavor is a son of Empire Maker from Allspice by Coronado's Quest. Bred in Kentucky by Jim Taffel Limited and owned by the breeder, trained by Greg Geyer, and ridden to victory by Shane Sellers. Country Flavor covers the mile in a 16th in 144.74. We'll head right back down to the fairgrounds now. Three and up, sprinting on the turf in the Bonapaw. And they're off in the Bonapaw. And a level start it was. Fast start for Gold Czar. Central City right there. Here's Western Smoke hustled from the rail by Miguel Mena. Western Smoke out to lead. Central City, who's well spotted there for Robbie Alvarado. Major rules through into third. Back talk is fourth. Cool Bullet in fifth. The outside Royal Express is sixth. Grand Traversa wide seventh. And then comes Gold Czar behind horses with under four furlongs to go. Then the Klein teammates. Early return and due date is out deep on the course. The opening quarter, 22 and one fifth seconds. Western Smoke coming toward the quarter pole. Western Smoke, three lengths clear from Central City back talk. Royal Express is wide. Major rules up the fence and they've turned the corner in the Bonapa. Under a quarter to run. Western Smoke push coming to shove. Here comes Central City. Back talk drifting out. Royal Express, front outside is Due Date charging with early return, Grand Traversa between horses, down to the final half furlong, and Due Date, Due Date is storming home, Tony Farina and Due Date, and Due Date to win the Bonapaw, Due Date has won the Bonapaw from early return, as Steve Margolis won two, then back to Gold Czar, Central City and Royal Express was... Due date picks up the victory off a troubled trip sixth last time out in the Breeders' Cup turf sprint. Here he rallies from far back off the pace to score the victory over early return with back talk. Trying the turf sprint game. This is a horse who was a nice two-year-old. Uh, it kind of struggled a little bit since that time, but uh, maybe the turf sprint game is going to turn out to be his thing. He ran a fairly solid effort here to finish third. The winner, due date, is a gray son of El Prado from Hidden Assets by Mount Livermore, bred in Kentucky by Bert, Elaine, and Richard Klein, owned by the breeders and trained by Steve Margolis. Ridden to victory by Tony Farina, due date covers the five and a half furlongs in 104.24. We'll continue now at the fairgrounds, wrapping up the Saturday Stakes features, the Sugar Bowl for two-year-olds.
in the gate. Away and running in the Sugar Bowl. BG Suavecito was awkwardly away. Joe Hollywood out fast along with Hydro Power just off them. Arch, arch, arch. And BG Suavecito is last to the Sugar Bowl Quartet as they head to the half mile pole. Robbie Alvarado in front with Joe Hollywood leading by three quarters of a length. Hydro Power is close in tow. John Court has Arch, Arch, Arch third, and BG Suavecito last. The opening quarter for Joe Hollywood, 22 and one fifth seconds. They enter the far turn. Joe Hollywood and Hydro Power trying to raise the stakes with under three for longs to go. BG Suavecito up the inside is close. And on the outside, Arch, 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 the four as they come toward the top of the fairground stretch. Here's Arch, 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 sweeping now on the outside of Joe Hollywood. Hydro Power under pressure. And toward the inside, BG Suavecito now third. Joe Hollywood and Arch, 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 and down to these two two-year-olds for this final fairgrounds furlong. It's Arch, 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 and Joe Hollywood up toward the wire. John Court and Arch, Arch, Arch. His first winning moment comes in the Sugar Bowl. Arch, Arch, Arch in one ten and two. Joe Hollywood second, BG Suavecito third, and Hydro Power. Arch, 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 another stakes winner for uh, the Stallion Arch, picking up the victory here by a length and three quarters, just off the pace over pacemaker Joe Hollywood with BG Suavecito back in third. Arch, Arch, Arch is a two-year-old son of Arch from Woodman's Dancer by Woodman, bred in Kentucky by Grapestock and owned by Robert Yagos, actually scoring his maiden victory here. He had finished second in his Churchill Downs debut at the end of last month, scoring his maiden win in stakes company under John Court. Arch, Arch, Arch covers the six in one ten point four nine. We'll pause for a brief message. When we return, we'll continue with racing action from the Mid-Atlantic and then head towards the West Coast. Please stay with us. Welcome back to Horses and Courses. We will continue now in Maryland. Laurel Park on Saturday hosting Colts and Geldings in the Maryland Juvenile Championship. And they're off. Steady Warrior and Broad Rule Concealed Identity. Gaelic partner this long shot is hustle along early, right up with the pace too. The only one out run early is Go Murray too, and only about seven lengths off the lead as they bunch up. Steady Warrior leaving room on the inside for long shot Gaelic partner to come through now, perhaps ahead in front. Gaelic partner from Steady Warrior as they begin the journey up the back stretch. And it's Broad Rule is well settled, three off the lead in third, and Concealed Identity just to the inside of that one of the three to Go Murray too, trailing the field. Gaelic partner. Big price out there leading the way. Gaelic partner from Steady Warrior opening up two and a half. Concealed identity. Here is Broad Rule has dropped some five off the lead and Go Marry 2 is on the inside in last position. Into the far turn Gaelic partner sailing solo up front. Concealed identity and Steady Warrior second and third. Go Marry 2 launches the rally on the inside and Go Marry 2 is rolling through. Gets through on the inside at the top of the lane they roll. Steady Warrior is now ahead in front from Concealed identity 
Trinity go. Murray two to the inside. Broad Rule is wide and trying to run on. Gaelic Partners dropped out last. They make the turn for home. Three across the track. Steady Warrior concealed. Identity go. Murray two to the inside. And a three-way scramble. Now they outrun the others. Just outside the final furlong. Concealed Identity. Steady Warrior. Concealed Identity. And J.D. Acosta from Steady Warrior. Go Murray two battles away. Broad Rule fourth on the fire outside. And they're close to home. Concealed Identity. Now you know who he is. The Maryland Juvenile Champ. Concealed Identity. Broad Rule second. And go Murray two of the photo there. And Steady Warrior was fourth in Gaelic Partner. Concealed Identity picks up the victory by three and a half lengths as one of the longer prices on the board at seven and a half to one over Broad Rule. Eight to one shot Go Mare 2 back in the third spot as the favorite Steady Warrior in from Charlestown where he'd been uh, running some pretty sharp efforts completes the uh, superfecta finishing fourth. Concealed Identity is a two-year-old base on Smarty Jones from Richetta by Polish Numbers bred in Maryland by Bowman and Higgins Stable and Patricia Chapman. Owned by Linda Godet and Morris Bailey, trained by Edmund Godet and ridden to victory by J.J. Acosta, Concealed Identity covers the 7.5 and, and 132.12. We'll head to Kentucky next, Turfway Park on Saturday, three-year-olds and upgoing nine furlongs in the Prairie Bayou. Post. And they're off. Timeless fashion broke well. So did Dynamite Bob and Get Rich Quick from the outside. Stately Victor up close today. Then down along the inside, that's Ordination, followed by Mint Chip. As they move for the first turn, Dynamite Bob now gets a short lead. Get Rich Quick is second. Timeless Fashion third. And Stately Victor right on his outside fourth. Ordination is fifth. Mint Chip sixth ahead. LJ's Way is seventh. Two and a half lengths back to your round, who runs eighth. Then it's uh, from the inside, Stream Cat. The first quarter went in 24 and 2 as they move on to the back stretch. It's still Dynamite Bob and Get Rich Quick. Those two are right together. Gap of four back to Timeless Fashion, third ahead. Stately Victor, fourth length. Ordination, fifth. Mint Chip now runs sixth. From the inside in seventh, that's LJ's away. Then gaining from the outside year-round, followed by Mr. McCool and Streamcat. They got the half and 48 and two as they move into the turn. Still the top two are Get Rich Quick and Dynamite Bob, but now Timeless Fashion is gaining ground. Timeless Fashion moves up in third. Then through from the inside gaining ground, that is LJ's way. Stately Victor is now up on the extreme outside, but Timeless Fashion now puts ahead in front, and Ordination moves up second. Ordination now gets the lead from Timeless Fashion. On the outside in third, that's Stately Victor. It's Ordination. Timeless Fashion. Here comes Stately Victor. Those three to the wire. That's a three-horse photo. Timeless Fashion, Stately Victor, and Ordination. Too close to call. Then Mint Chip. Timeless Fashion wins this one for the second time in a row, and it was in fact a close one, a very exciting three-horse stretch run with Timeless Fashion getting his nose down on the wire under James Lopez over Stately Victor, a three-year-old grade one winner on synthetic earlier this year with Ordination back in third, but a very close third indeed. The winner, Timeless Fashion, is a Bay Gelding, a Son of Sky Classic from Added Ruffles by Formal Gold. Bred in Kentucky by David E. Hager II, owned by R. Share Family Limited and Judy Miller. Trained by Thomas Drury Jr. and ridden to victory by James Lopez. Timeless Fashion covers the 9 of 153.04. We'll head out to the West Coast next. We'll start things off in Northern California, where on Saturday afternoon, they ran the Off the Turf Pacific Heights for fillies and mares. Racing. Blue Moon High wandering a little wide out of gate six. Antares World begins smoothly and has a narrow lead over Catsalot through the first furlong. Catsalot on the inside now going to shade Antares World with a lap to go. I can hear is running third. 
No speed on. She's a lucky wage of fourth from a three wide blue moon high and Taylor Jean sixth in the middle. Cuts a lot, kicks away with a useful lead at the seven eighths. And Tare's well lets her go and is content to sit two and a half lengths off the pace. Then one and a half lengths to I can hear. Followed by She's a Lucky Wager, Blue Moon High still three deep, and Taylor Jean splits fillies at the tail. Three quarters of a mile to go, and Catsalot just gliding along on an effortless lead. By four lengths to Antares World, two lengths I can hear. Then She's a Lucky Wager from Blue Moon High, and Taylor Jean is last of all in a field surprisingly strung out, given that this lead uh, belonging to Catsalot has just been at a pretty pedestrian tempo. And along past the half mile in the Pacific Heights, it's cats a lot by four lengths from Antares World, another four lengths I can hear. Three more to Taylor Jean, ahead of She's a Lucky Wager and Blue Moon High as last. And is the best part of 20 lengths from cats a lot, who comes past the 5 sixteenths, clear by four lengths. Antares World is second, being asked to give chase now to the leader. A gap of six lengths to I can hear, and six more to Taylor Jean. Turning for home, Catsalot out to about the five path, leading three lengths to Antares World, who's under the whip, and she's taking a while to really seriously eat into this lead held by Catsalot. Julian Couton got his first stakes winner last week, and he is going to repeat the dose in the Pacific Heights, taking them all the way aboard Catsalot. Cats a lot, beating Antares World, I can hear third, many lengths, she's a lucky wager, then Taylor Jean and Blue Moon High. The time 151.96. Cats a lot picking up a little bit of an upset victory here on the front end over on Taris World, who was the favorite. I think it's fair to say she's probably a little bit better on the turf than on the synthetic, but uh, nonetheless, she looked to be a, a little bit of a class factor in here. I Can Hear completes the order of the top three. Top three all coming out of races in Southern California. Cats a lot, chestnut filly, a daughter of momentum from Clerical Error by Kendor, was bred in California by J. Paul Redham and is owned by Met. Magalyn O. Bryant, trained by Leonard Powell, ran the victory by Julian Coutin. Cats a lot. Covers the mile and a furlong of 151.96. We'll head to the Southern California now. Hollywood Park having some weather problems on Sunday, but fortunately they were able to complete Saturday's grade one cash call futurity for two year olds. They're at the post. They're off. They're off. High level Jeff and comma to the top show speed. JP's Gusto is at the rail. Riveting Reason and Rustler Hustler. Couple house ride between horses had to check briefly. Slammer time is next. Industry leader is wide. And the early trailer is Ronan Dax. They run to the back stretch and High Level Jeff has the lead from Comet to the top in second. High Level Jeff's a length in front. Comet to the top is second three quarters of a length from JP's Gusto. Rustler Hustler between horses and a three wide riveting reason. Then comes Industry Leader, sixth and about four from the front. Slammer Time is in seventh and a length to Gourmet Dinner, eighth and about eight lengths behind. Clubhouse Ride is second to last with nine to make up. Ronan Dax is the trailer. There's a half mile left to run in the 30th. Cash Call Futurity High Level Jeff is the leader at the half mile marker. Just a half length advantage on Comet to the top in second. Industry Leader runs out outside of Riveting Reason. Between Horses goes hot. At the rail goes JP's Gusto. Then comes Gourmet Dinner. He's got a chance. Slammer Time is seven from the front. Ronan Dax. Clubhouse Ride is the trailer and Comma to the top has made the lead at the quarter mile marker in the futurity. Comma to the top is suddenly three and a half lengths in front. And Comma to the top is running away at the top of the stretch. Riveting Reason has emerged into second. And to the outside goes Gourmet Dinner, but Comma to the top is dominating past mid stretch. He's running them right off their feet. Comma to the top is five and a half lengths in front. From the back of the pack, Clubhouse Ride has run into second. And JP's Gusto. Comma to the top all the way to win. The 30th cash call futurity goes to a consummate professional. Comma to the top beat JP's Gusto. It is close for third clubhouse ride and gourmet dinner. 
Come to the top picks up the victory after a bit of an exciting pre-race event. The race was delayed considerably as a result of uh, actually the eventual winner, Come to the top, having thrown a shoe. They called in a farrier. The farrier was injured in the process of uh, replacing the shoe. There was all kinds of confusion. They eventually managed to get the race run, and it was in fact Come to the top. In off a win in the generous on the turf last time out. He's now six for 10 lifetime, a $22,000 purchase early this year in April as a two-year-old in training has now earned over $550,000. J.P.'s Gusto, another nice effort to finish in the second spot. He was six in the Breeders' Cup Juvenile. Uh, I think that this guy is probably in the long run going to be distance limited, but a couple of decent efforts when going roots of ground on the synthetic clubhouse ride in from a third place finish at Delta Downs in the jackpot completes the order of the top three. The winner coming to the top is a bay two-year-old gelded son of Buona Charlie from Maggie Storm by Stormy Atlantic. Bred in Florida by Richard and Linda Thompson, owned by Gary Barber, Roger Birnbaum, and Kevin Chuzahara. Trained by Peter Miller and ridden to victory by Corey Nakatani. Coming to the top covers the mile in the 16th and 144.72. We'll pause now for one more brief message, and when we return, we'll be heading to the Big A for a busy week's worth of stakes racing action. Please stay with us. This portion of the program brought to you by Capital Bets. For more information, go to CapitalOTB.com. Catch the excitement with Capital OTB Online. It's now easier than ever with internet wagering at CapitalOTB.com. Wager online and get track odds, online contests, membership specials, and it's secure and fan-friendly. Whether it's a big stakes day like the Kentucky Derby, Belmont Stakes, Traverse Stakes, Breeders' Cup, or just a great day of racing, wagering online at CapitalOTB.com is always simple and easy. Sign up today at CapitalOTB.com because your chances are better with Capital OTB. Welcome back to Horses and Courses. We will continue now at Aqueduct as they head into a bit of a pre-Christmas hiatus. They had a very busy week, including a number of overnight stakes on the course of the midweek card. And we will go back to last Wednesday. Three-year-olds at a mile and 70 yards in the Cosmic Bob. They're in the gate. And they're off. Bit of a bobble there shortly after the start for number three, Monsignor, and he trails the field. No shenanigans and Goombadaguska out for the early lead. No shenanigans makes his way now down to the rail and is in front. Monsignor now comes on and goes up to challenge for the lead. Now Monsignor goes on with it. And Monsignor's in front and quickly opens up here. Monsignor in front, two and a half lengths over no shenanigans. Teeks north at the rail, and on the outside, Gumbadaguska. The quarter in 24 and two fifth seconds as the field moves up the back stretch. Monsignor has a four length advantage over the gray, no shenanigans. A break of two to Teeks north in third, and Gumbadaguska. Monsignor, the odds on favorite in front here after a half and 48 seconds. It's Monsignor by three and a half lengths. No shenanigans, giving chase in second. Teeks North 
and Goombada Guska third and fourth as they round the far turn. It's Monsignor in front that leads down to two lengths. No shenanigans getting closer. And Goombada Guska is coming on now. Moving into third, just a length and a half from Monsignor. Teeks North is the trailer, three quarters in one, 13 and one. They turn for home. Here comes Goombada Gusker and no shenanigans. Up to take over from Monsignor, who's dropped out of it. Goombada Gusker on the outside. No shenanigans on the inside. Goombada Gusker in front now. No shenanigans is second. Teeks North moves to third. Monsignor is fourth. It's Goombada Guska by almost three. No shenanigans, Antiques North. Gumbada Guska picks up the victory. He had won a state bred stake at Mammoth a couple of months back in mid September, was fourth twice subsequent to that, including once in the Big Brown Stakes and then a uh, November allowance race against older horses, also in New Jersey. Here he gets a jump on this field late. It was kind of an interestingly run race. Teeks North, who was uh, uh, the winner of the Big Brown, was back in this spot. And it was strangely run in that Monsignor got off to a little bit of a sluggish start, but then rallied up into the race very quickly. Uh, looked like he was going along very easily, but then kind of folded, setting it up for Gumbada Guska, who rallied strongly to go away by three as the longest shot on the board. Gumbada Guska, a dark bear brown son of Yana Guska from Gumbada by the Sea by Sea Hero, was bred in New Jersey by Navisink Thoroughbreds and is owned by Navisink Breed. Trained by Scott Vulcan, ridden to victory by Alan Garcia, Gumbada Guska covers the mile in 70 and 143.20. We'll come right back on Thursday, or I'm sorry, with another stake on Wednesday, co-featured only queens for two-year-old fillies. They're in the gate. And they're off. Awkward start there for number five, Let Me Go. And uh, she's at the back of the pack. She's now eight or nine lengths uh, from the leaders. And the leader is Red's Round Table. In front here, over Play With Me. Flying Train runs in third, then the big break. Back to Let Me Go in fourth. Red's Round Table has the lead by two lengths. Ran an opening quarter mile in 22 and three fifth seconds. Flying Train at the rail and play with me on the outside. Farther back is Let Me Go. Midway around the far turn, Red's round table by a length. Play with me now moves into second. Flying train towards the rail in third. It's a break of uh, four lengths now to Let Me Go. As the field turns for home, the half mile in 46 and two fifth seconds. Red's round table in between horses. Play with me's on the outside and flying trains down at the rail. Then let me go. They move for the 16th pole. Play with me on the outside has now taken the lead from Red's round table, but Red's round table is fighting back again. Red's round table, play with me. The two of them come to the line. Too tight to call. Was it Red's Round Table or Play With Me? Red's Round Table, a pretty nice effort by this filly in game fashion. She's four for five lifetime. Her other wins had all come by open lengths. Here she showed quite a bit of gameness as she dug down and fought it out with Play With Me down on the inside, getting her nose down on the wire to score over the favorite flying train back in the third spot. Red's Round Table is a chestnut two-year-old daughter of Cuvée from Carol D. by High Yield. Bred in Kentucky by Winchell Thoroughbreds, owned by Arnold A. Heft and trained by Tim Keefe. Ridden to victory by Joe Rocco Jr., a Red's Round Table covers the 6 and 112.18. We'll head next into the Thursday card, three and up fillies and mares at a mile and 70 yards in the Sky Beauty. And they're off. Wind Caper right out for the lead. But Poovy's moving up alongside. So it's Poovy and Wind Caper. And those two quickly have opened up five lengths on the other three. Into the clubhouse turn. Poovy goes on with it. Poovy's in front. Two lengths over Wind Caper. Then a break of six. Back to checkpoint in third. Nick's appealing lady runs in fourth. And Muhawara is fifth. The opening quarter was 23 and three fifth seconds. They're on the back stretch. Poovy leads by a length and a half. 
Win Caper giving chase in second. Now it's an, an eight length break. Back to checkpoint in third. Followed by Nick's Appealing Lady and Muharara. They continue up the back stretch with Poovy leading Win Caper by three quarters of a length. Poovy in front, Win Caper on the outside. Now 10 lengths. Back to checkpoint in third, then Muhuara and Nick's appealing lady around the far turn. The half was strong, 46 and four, and Win Caper has taken over. Win Caper in front quickly with a seven length lead over Puvi who's stopping. Muhuara moves up on the outside with checkpoint. They turn into the stretch. Three quarters went in 111. Win Caper's in front. The lead is five lengths over Muhuara. Checkpoint is third. A furlong to the finish. Win Caper's in front, but she's tiring. Muhuara is gaining on the outside. Checkpoint is third. Here's Muhuara to take over the lead in deep stretch. Muhuara from off the pace. Checkpoint got up for second. Win Caper faded to third. Muhawara, another horse, taking advantage of a little bit of a strangely run race. Poovy, you could figure, was going to show some speed coming back off of the layoff. A wind caper was a stretch out sprinter. Well, when David Cohen decided to aggressively send Poovy after wind caper, that set things up immediately for a closer. I was hoping it was going to be checkpoint, but it was Muhawara who gets the three quarters of a length victory over checkpoint. Wind caper sticking around to finish third. The winner, Muhawara. Broker Maiden in April this year on the main track at Aqueduct had kind of toiled around in different things. They had tried her on turf at Roots. They had tried her uh, sprinting and so forth. They gave her a little bit of freshening into the November 24th allowance race that she won last time out. And now she gets a little bit of a uh, little bit of credit for winning an overnight stake. And it looked like a uh, perhaps a good launching pad for her to perhaps have a fairly successful winter here in New York. Muhawara is a gray filly, a daughter of Unbridled Song from Habibti by Tabasco Cat. Bred in Kentucky by Shadwell Farm and owned by the breeder, trained by Kieran McLaughlin, ridden a victory by Alan Garcia. Muhawara covers the mile in the 70 and 143.43. We'll continue with stakes racing action for fillies and mares, this time in the state bred ranks in the Jenna Jenna. They're in the gate. And they're off and they all came away to a good beginning it's 515 and shine upon shine upon making her way over to the inside now 515's on the outside into the clubhouse turn shine upon narrow lead 515 races in second my dinah at the rail caracorum fugitive is in between horses ouchy knights on the outside and spa city princess will be the early trailer in sixth as they head for the back stretch shine upon leads by a neck 515 on the outside is right there in second after an opening quarter mile in 24 and three-fifth seconds. Shine upon and 515 now heads apart. Now 515 pokes ahead in front of Shine Upon. Caracorum Fugitive races in third. Ouchy Knight on the outside of My Dinah. A six-length break back to Spa City Princess. Half mile, 49 and two-fifth seconds. And big long shot, 515 is now clear by more than a length. Karakorum Fugitive moving into second. Ouchie Knight on the outside in third. Shine Upon is back running in fourth. Then comes My Dinah and the big break back to Spa City Princess. 515 by a head. Karakorum Fugitive in between horses. Ouchie Knight on the outside. Three quarters went in 113 and four. And Shine Upon looking to come back again down at the rail. Here comes Shine Upon to regain the lead. Then it's 515. Ouchie Knight. My Diner on the far outside. They pass the 16th pole. And Shine Upon is going to win it here. Had the lead, gave it up, and comes back to win by four lengths. My Diner second. 515 was third.
Shine Upon Local Connection scoring the victory here by four and a half lengths. Throttle down over My Dino with 515 back in the third spot. Another kind of somewhat strangely run race. Shine Upon got into the bridle fairly early, but Alan Garcia decided he did not want her on the lead and contesting the early pace allowed her to settle back, re rallied boldly up the fence to score going away. The winner, Shine Upon, is a chestnut daughter of Congaree from Look Upon by Carson City. Bred in New York by the Berkshire Stud, owned by Local Connections, the Blue Bison Stable and Hoffman Thoroughbreds, off of a win last time out on the Aqueduct main track against Good Open Company. She's now three for three on the Aqueduct Inner, looking forward to another busy winter on the Aqueduct Inner, most certainly from a very successful filly on this surface. Trained by Jimmy Jerkins and ridden to victory by Alan Garcia, Shine Upon covers the mile and 70 and 141.90. We'll head into the weekend now. Saturday afternoon stakes feature for older sprinters was the Gravesend. They're in the gate. And they're off. Jiu-Jitsu Jax shows first, driven by success at the rail. Jiu-Jitsu Jax, driven by success, driven by success, pokes ahead in front. Jiu-Jitsu Jax is in second, foot candles is in third. On the far outside is Jack on the rocks. In between horses, endless circle. And alongside is Kelly Barchoa. Ravallo is the trailer in seventh after an opening quarter mile in 22 seconds. Driven by success, leads by a head. And it's foot candles on the outside in second by two and a half lengths. Then comes Jiu Jitsu Jackson third. Jack on the rocks is in fourth, Cali Bracho in fifth, then Endless Circle and Ravallo, and they're in the stretch, the half 44 and two fifth seconds. Driven by success, on the outside is entry mate, Cali Brachoa, Cali Brachoa, and driven by success, those two together with a 16th out, and Cali Brachoa now takes the lead from driven by success, it's Cali Brachoa to win the Gravesend, and did it in 108 and four. Driven by success, second. Kelly Bracoa picking up the victory first off the $40,000 claim. This is a horse that's run some pretty sharp races and has some pretty sharp early speed, uh, but here rallied from off the pace to, to finish in the top spot. The pace was made by his stablemate, driven by success, who held on to run second. Endless Circle just a tick or two behind the top two in terms of the betting uh, behind that entry. Completes the order of the top three. The winner, Kelly Bracoa, is a dark bay or brown three-year-old son of Southern Image from Fort Lauderdale by Montbrook. Bred in Kentucky by Nelson Bunker Hunt, owned by the Rapoli Stable and trained by Todd Pletcher. Ridden to victory by David Cohen, Kelly Bracoa covers the six in 108.85. Next up, the Sunday stakes feature. On Sunday afternoon, it was three-year-olds and up going one mile in the 49er. And they're off. Good start for understatement on the outside. And understatement goes right for the lead. Ben's Cat runs in second. Eagle Strike is in third. Then Al Maduro fourth. More than a reason. Trails the field in fifth as they head around the clubhouse turn. Understatement leads by two and a half lengths over Ben's Cat. It's another two lengths to Eagle Strike in third. And then Al Maduro. And more than a reason is a fifth. Eight or nine lengths from the lead. The opening quarter mile in 24 and 1 fifth seconds. They straighten away, head up the back stretch. Understatement leads three quarters of a length. Ben's Cat runs in second. Eagle Strike, Al Maduro, held apart third and fourth, six lengths to more than a reason in fifth. It's Understatement, the favorite, leading here by a half length over Ben's Cat. And the opening half mile went in 47 and four. Understatement at the rail. Ben's Cat on the outside. Understatement by a half length with Ben's Cat racing in second. A break of two to Al Maduro in third. Then Eagle Strike, more than a reason, is drawn within five lengths of the front. As the field comes for the top of the stretch, it's Understatement and Ben's Cat. 
Nothing between them. Three quarters and one, 11 and three. Almodoro getting closer from third. Here comes Almodoro now to take over. Almodoro's in front. Then Ben's cat. Understatements dropped out of it. More than a reason. Moving up on the outside, but he's not going to get to Almodoro, who was sharp in victory here. One by almost four. Ben's cat second. More than a reason third. Almodoro, this is a horse that I, I have to say I've kind of been waiting on for a long time. He's now a late four-year-old, and early in his three-year-old year, he ran a couple of big races that kind of put him into uh, a couple of people's vision for the Triple Crown. He's had a couple setbacks, uh, trainer changes, and so forth, but here he picks up stakes credentials, drawing away by four and a quarter lengths over Ben's cat. More than a reason, who only eight days earlier had picked up the win in the Queens County Handicap, right back, finishing third. The winner, Al Maduro, is a four-year-old bay son of Medallia Doro from Brenda D.S. by Fortunate Prospect. Bred in Kentucky by Fred N. Sahadi, owned by Robert and Mary Ellen Bork and Stuart and Sherry Goldstein, trained by Todd Pletcher, ridden to victory by Javier Castellano. Al Maduro covers the mile on the inner in 136.27. That'll wrap up this edition of Horses and Courses. Thank you very much for joining us here on the program. We would like to, uh, from all of us here at Horses and Courses, wish you a very happy and Merry Christmas as we come into this Christmas week. I'd also like to thank uh, all of the guys that helped get this program on the air all throughout the course of the year. Pete Persico, Pat Peretta, Dan Hayes, Kirk Flick on the day shift and uh, putting together and editing all of these videos for you. And uh, we certainly would like to uh, thank them and wish them a very Merry Christmas as well. Thank you for joining us and we'll be back again next week with another edition of Horses and Courses.